It is over, Eleven. You have freed me. You can't stop this now. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my brand new Stranger Things Season 4 Part 2 trailer video. We don't have that much long to wait before more episodes are dropping, and they've already explained what's going on with the time jump between Season 4 and Season 5. Yes, there is a Season 5. They've already renewed it. Season 5 is supposed to be the last season, but there is a spin-off show that they're developing. I'll talk about that later in the video, too. They dropped a couple new promos since the season ended, so we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of new footage, a bunch of new previews. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. So the brand new footage just shows Eleven coming out of the tank like she's gotten her powers back like they did at the end of season four, part one. The whole idea is that Dr. Brenner said that she was supposed to come back and come back even more powerful than number one than the Vecna was supposed to be. There's a couple trailer scenes in the original season four trailer for part one. They actually included a bunch of footage from part two in the part one trailer. You see her hulking out in these tunnels here with her powers, just everything going crazy all around her in this suit. And later, after she's exited the base outside in the desert, hulking out, blowing up a whole bunch of stuff. I think it's just meant to be one of those kind of WTF moments where they show you at the beginning of season four, part two, how powerful she's gotten. Like they told you she was super powerful, but they're going to show you too. Just to hype up this full-blown wizard battle that they were hyping up between her and Vecna, or her and number one, however you want to think about him. Technically, it's the same person, but I know there are a lot of questions about exactly what happened when she pushed him through the gate back in the late 1970s and who actually created the Upside Down. Like, where did this come from? Why does it look like Hawkins? Thankfully, after the season came out, Millie Bobby Brown, the producers, talked about this, kind of clarifying some of these details. The other funny thing the Duffer Brothers, the creators, were talking about is how they literally forgot Will's birthday in previous seasons. Like, the reason why they didn't celebrate it in a big way in previous seasons sometimes is because they just flat out forgot. Like, oh yeah, Will has a birthday. They briefly addressed that during season four, part one, and I think they're going to turn Will into a bigger thing in how they solve everything during season four, part two. Because the Upside Down literally froze on the day that he disappeared into the Upside Down. But for those of you asking whether or not Will created the Upside Down or he has something to do with his creation, I think that's a coincidence. Because of why they explained the Upside Down looking so much like Hawkins that they call it the Upside Down. Like, literally looks like a copy of Hawkins, but frozen in time on the date that she opened the Mother Gate. All these different scenes that they preview are just the different groups on the show rallying in the different places that we last saw them in. Like you see Eddie and Steve's group here preparing to fight Vecna. Then you see Max and Lucas back inside Vecna's house because that's sort of his locus of power. Like that's where he's been staying this whole time. Joyce Hopper, Murray, and now Dimitri too are still in Russia. You see them looking like they're investigating some Russian facility that's left over from the experiments they did during season three. If you remember, Vecna was trying to weaken the barrier between different dimensions and the Russians themselves were trying to open a gate inside Siberia before they came back to Hawkins. So all these scenes of him investigating this facility here with the black cloud swirling, that's still inside Russia, inside the facility where their version of the gate was, where they were trying to open one. Initially, they were unsuccessful, but I think the whole idea is that what was happening towards the end of season four, part one, weakened the barriers. So that probably caused the Russian gate to open just a little bit, enough for this to happen. Then you have the California group that look like they're trying to find Eleven as she's exiting the base. But for those of you asking what was going on at the end of season four, part one, did Eleven create the upside down? Did Vecna create the upside down? Millie Bobby Brown in real life actually confirmed my suspicion that the upside down place here, this alternate dimension, always existed like this. It just recently started to look more like Hawkins. According to her, it was always meant to be this alternate dimension. And when you first see her push number one into this area, it was always meant to look like this. Just this red void-like place full of a lot of energy, but not a lot of land masses. So this is what it looked like in the late 1970s. She pushes number one in there, and then eventually it starts to look like the upside down that you remember from season one. So a lot of you asking, why did it start looking like Hawkins? Who did that? Did Will have something to do with that? Or did Eleven have something to do with that? Because it literally froze on the date that she opened the mother gate, the date that Will disappeared. The way they clarified this is that technically it's actually Eleven who's to blame for the Upside Down looking so much like Hawkins, but only in an indirect way. 
So what happened here is that back in the late 1970s, the first time she pushed number one into the upside down, it just kept looking like this. Like he may have used some of his mental powers to form his house and some of the aspects of it. But for the most part, like this vast area here, this alternate dimension just looked like this. What happened later though in the timeline when she opened the mother gate in the early 1980s is that both of the alternate dimensions, like the normal dimension that they come from in the alternate dimension of the upside down started to bleed together. Like they started to literally overlap and the point of overlap is where Hawkins is. And that's why Hawkins started to look like the upside down that you remember is just because it literally started to overlap with the actual Hawkins. And what's happening heading into season four, part two, obviously season five, is that both of the dimensions are beginning to overlap more and more and more and bleed into each other. Obviously now more literally because the gaze are starting to open in a bigger way. So technically 11 is the reason why the upside down started to look like Hawkins, but not because she was trying to make it look like Hawkins. Just because when she opened the mother gate, it caused the dimensions to overlap. The other really cool thing is that they didn't originally call this alternate dimension the upside down. That was more of like a pop culture thing that the fans created that they made canon after the fact. Initially when they were developing the series, they called it the nether. So it wasn't always supposed to look like the upside down. Like I said, it's because Eleven opened the mother gate later on. And I think the explanation for why it's frozen at the date that she opened the mother gate is just because of the way it overlapped with Hawkins on that date. It's not so much because of something that Will did, but Will does seem like he has a special connection with the Mind Flayer. So the next big question everyone's asking is who is the ultimate big boss of this show? Like who is gonna be the villain of season five if it seems like they're hyping up 11 versus number one during season four, part two? This gets back to what Dusty said during season four, part one. During an episode, he literally says that the Mind Flayer exists like a level above number one. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 what? Do we know that wants to take over the world? The Mind Flayer. So if the Demogorgon was just his foot soldier, Vecna's his five-star general. But because they made the Mind Flayer the villain of previous seasons controlling other things, what they might wind up doing is say the Mind Flayer was trying to control what Vecna was doing, like kind of twist him against Hawkins and use him the same way that he wants to use Eleven's power to open the gates more fully and overlap the dimensions permanently so that he can absorb the regular dimension. Because they kind of hyped that up in previous seasons, like the whole idea is that the Mind Flayer basically wants to eat other dimensions and make them part of his own upside down dimension. And if you're not a big Dungeons and Dragons fan, they actually did play some funny Dungeons and Dragons in real life to promote the season. But within the canon of Dungeons and Dragons, when you talk about the different villains that they make for the different seasons, Vecna is like a lich. He's not meant to be like the big bad of Dungeons and Dragons. So that's why I think that he's not meant to be like the ultimate big bad of the show and Eleven will wind up blowing through him during season four, part two. Like they will defeat him in some way. He won't be the ultimate big bad of season five. A lot of you also asking now, small detail, does this mean that Eleven is kind of like his surrogate child if number one said that Brenner tried to recreate him using parts of him with these other children? I think the idea is that her mother was actually already pregnant with her when she entered the MK Ultra experiments and he started experimenting with her using the biological parts of Vecna that he had extracted from him. So he's more metaphorically the father of what eventually Eleven became, but he's not like her biological father secretly or anything like that. Like when he's telling her all these things, he's trying to mess with her head saying that I'm way better than you are. But Brenner revealed that ultimately because of what they're doing, she's supposed to be way more powerful than him. Which I think is just a big hat tip to whatever the ending is going to wind up being. Like she will eventually defeat number one. For those of you asking, what happened to the other children who survived? Because they had the whole thing with number eight with Kali, who just kind of took off into the ether in previous seasons. She's still alive out there somewhere. What they'll probably do is they'll probably try to bring Kali, number eight, whoever else survived from the program, if there's anybody else beyond her, back during season five. I'm not expecting to see her during season four, part two. There are a couple scenes that we see of them inside the Upside Down, like you see Eddie playing heavy metal music inside the Upside Down, but on the trailer, like on the other side of the gate inside his trailer. It looks like they're using that to just try and confound the demo bats. This sort of ties in with the whole Kate Bush thing running up that hill. The idea that music somehow helps them beat what Vecna number one is doing, mostly by interrupting the psychic signal that he's using to control people. But all the other footage that you see in the trailer for season four, part two is them just in different parts of the real world and inside the upside down trying to fight the forces of Vecna. Like I said, they're just meant to show you the two different universes slowly bleeding into each other, slowly overlapping. If there's any big questions that you have that I didn't address during the video or big Easter eggs that I didn't talk about, just write them below in the comments. I will do more videos for the final episodes because there's only two final episodes. So there's not gonna be that much stuff. Everyone click here to learn about the brand new Game of Thrones Jon Snow sequel series that HBO is making and click here for my first look at the Avatar The Last Airbender movie trilogy that they're making. They finally released the first look at that. 
Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.